uh, good, good to be out with the guys. Good first day. Had a really good winter. Uh, of course, it's you know first two days. Um, it's 15 practices. Three are in helmets. Uh, the first two in helmets. So you do as much as you can, but you really won't know. Um, we're going to go five day run here. With two helmets. We'll practice Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday with some good hitting. We'll have a good gauge uh, by then. I know we've had a good winter. Was that translated into and playing with crispers we start up right here. So in pretty good shape, reasonably healthy and ready to get a decent go for the first day, I guess. Coach, you, on the release, you, uh, some position changes, maybe the most notable, Covington back to defense. What was the kind of uh, thinking behind you know, that? No, it's not really as much anything. It's what he wanted. Um, and I always, you know, I, I think he could, I mean, I think he could be very good at quarterback and we could definitely use him there, but we could use him on defense and it's what he wanted. And to me, you kind of go with where your heart is and, I can, you know, if, if, you know, to me, what's, if it's good for you, it's good for the team. So it's, it's, one, it's nice to say I can do whatever the team wants, but if you don't want it or believe in it or think it's best for you, it's not going to be good. So he's going to be limited coming off his knee injuries, doing some stuff, but he's limited enough that, um, uh, you know, he won't really get into a lot of contact. But he wanted to go, so he's right now back at that field outside back or spot. And, and it's then, really what, and not that we get open up like what you, but he expressed his concerns. I agree with it. And, so and the thought process of Man Jerry from the, the banded outside linebacker to down back to DN. Yeah, uh, again, got some good depth here and just thought we was missed in playing guys and he's kind of a rush. Uh, he'll be a little bit, you know, he's gotten bigger and stronger. He is a veteran. He does need to continue to gain some. Um, but we just, you know, you know, you, we're going to play a little bit more of a two deep, three deep air and just thought he would help the team more. And really, it's also Zach Shaw played at his backup last year and probably played better than Nick. Not putting pick down, I mean, Zach played equally as well. And we think now Sykes, young player, could come in there to help us. So we just thought we had a little bit more depth and it would get our trying to get our best 11 or really our best 22 defensive guys out there. Where are the, uh, what's the situation with Marky Hawkins and Craig Keel? Where are they? Uh, he's got some minor injuries going, 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 going to hold him out. Nothing like they got blown knees. One guy fell and busted a wrist up and he's, you know, they're just out of practice and it's tough because one's a new guy, one's a freshman that uh, it'll hurt them because. Uh, They'll be good by summer. They'll probably be good by probably about the time we see the last day of practice, probably first of May, they'll be good to go. So they'll be back and have good summers. But when you miss a ton, they're dressed and they're doing some work. Turn but, into uh, a guy. Yeah. And uh, they catch like them. And, uh, but, the, um, <laughs> but anyway, it just hurts. It'll hurt them. It's not, I mean, you want, you want a guy like Corey Kill to really come, and come into his own and get out there and get going. And now he's going to miss his first spring. So... It's not the ideal formula, but that's his, that's his equation. He's going to have to work it. The same with Marquis and transfer. So nothing major. He's got injured during our winter workouts. What about Sutfeld in terms of where he's at? And he's, at a, he's, he's, you know, um, I, I, I'd like him to be farther along just because uh, being a taller person, you know, it's always gaining strength. And, and because, you know, with your leg strength and lower body strength, you move so much better and have balance. And, Body control and your throwing and whatnot, so he's limited. Even though he's so he's limited sometimes certain apparatuses, what can hold him <coughs> to um, to lift. So it's it's more about he's healthy. I'd like you know he's going to need a great. We're going to work with lift very very hard for him through this session. Very very hard in May and probably even more than he's used to in June and July is when he get his strength and stamina where he's very durable. So uh, he's healthy. But because he's had limitations in, in lifting, we got to be very diligent in our April, May, June, and July plan. Even right. physically, right here. Right are, are you kind of encouraged where he's had this is five months since the injury, and really like five, almost five more months before he has to play a game? Yeah, I mean he's from the. I think from the initial, of course, I mean, because it's non-throwing, that helps him because he really plays a position where it's not a lot of banging contact going on right now. That helps. Um, so I don't know what their initial time was. I think on paper he appears to be maybe the end of their timeline, but he came back in January throwing, and he's had no setbacks, so um, I'm not surprised, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased for sure he's able to, I mean, he got, he, he, he had 50%, but he did, he did every rep of the ones today, and DMI got most of the twos, and we're gaining cameras, some of the players. Coach, you, uh, you tweeted out some numbers about the most part mm -hmm. I saw. Uh, I think about you know, DeAndre Heron dropped a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. You guys lost four offensive linemen, but you had four kids redshirting. Uh, <coughs> uh, the line will be a strength. I, I was going to ask you about some of the some of the guys that we haven't yeah. seen redshirted. What, well, what do you think? Well, what we wanted to do one, and you talk about some guy like, for example, Latham came back after break weight two ninety nine. 
that's pretty good. He was pretty active out there not getting on that pad, but pretty uh, 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 Rainer was 295. Nate Hoff was 295. Um, DeAndre Aaron, Aaron came in at 305. I think uh, Big Ralph was down to 312. I mean, all their, all their heavy guys were under, and where we wanted them coming off a of break, they were there. We got them there through winter, coming on spring break, because we talked about not regressing. You know, you, you gain 10 pounds in the bench press, and you lose 10 pounds at the same as you go through, you know, up, you know, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining strength, losing strength. You don't want to lose from your gains. Especially, you might have slight losses, but not excessive, because if that's the case, you're gaining, losing, gaining, losing, you're staying the same. So we made some gains. Now we're talking about how to maintain those gains, build it through spring, build it through summer to come back even more advanced. Now we're year, going into the fifth cycle of lifting with these guys. And so you got guys, um, for example, Wes Martin, um, he did 225, I want to say 24, 26 times a year ago. He went to 41. Now, 26 was high on the team. So it's one thing when you come and lift at two and you go to 10 because you never lift it. You'll see it, if when you're weak and the guy, you'll see a big boy, when you're strong and make a significant jump, that was impressive. He ran a 509.40 and so he's 300, give or take pounds, and he's benching four, 55, 65, going every clean. I think he missed 375, did 355. I mean, his chart numbers for a freshman high. Nate Hoff, I mean, Nate ran 508 and he's benching 500 pounds. So he's not a total, just fat guy. Now, 508 maybe ain't the fastest D lineman, but a five flat, five one D lineman that's throwing 630 pounds of squat at you and 500 bench. That's some power because there's some movement with that. That's impressive. Uh, and we didn't skew our numbers. Now we're not testing like the NFL, so it's not um, digital times. But we're not trying to make you feel better than you are. If you jumped it, you jumped it. If you benched it, you benched it. So like Spriggs's numbers, I mean those. Not, and that ain't surprising. I mean, but those numbers, I mean, compared to a couple of kids that are home first round picks, those numbers are better than those kids' numbers. His numbers, if he was at the combat. Now, his play needs to match his numbers. And his play has not been bad, but it doesn't match the numbers right now. And that's what we're talking about, how to take your talent and take it into consistent preparation, consistent performance, practice habits, to play as a high-end talent. Because he's a high-end talent, start becoming a high-end player. Um, Timmy Gordon, very impressive, very talented young line. Wes Martin, very talented. Uh, but to me, you've got you've got Jake Reed and 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 um, Wes Rogers. Those are four and five year kids that are benching 400 and 380, and those are veterans. And what's happening now? Like we're playing D line, and Barwick and Miminger and those young guys, they're still developing instead of having to play as freshmen. So it's nice that some of these big kids can develop a year instead of getting splattered for a year. So we've gotten the depth up where we were. We're, we're missing a couple of what Dan Feeney is the best guy we got. Jason Spriggs is the most talented. Ross and Evans and Jacob Bailey are coming off minor knees. We're going to protect them because they've got old man knees. So we're not going to grind them through spring so we can have them in the fall because they'll be in our 7-8 rotation. So they'll be depth in the O-line. They'll be depth in the D-line. Anthony Casaro had a great spring at 4-6-8. You guys think Fuchs is Mr. Athlete playing basketball here in 4 7 three. Kassar ran 4.68. If you saw a couple big plays the other day, you saw him. I mean, he's running. But he also benched 365. He's the strongest. So we had a great winner. Martin did an awesome job. We had a plan to slow spring ball down, max it. We also gave our guys targets. We shot for it. And listen, it is like Ralph at one time he squatted 6.30. But the other day he squatted 6.15. Now, with a big number, we don't hurt it back. But Ralph, your bet, your, your squat down at 6.15. We're not going back to your all-time best. The day we play Ohio State, this is where we are. The day we play Southern Illinois, this is where every day you show up where you are. But we gave our guys some goals. We attacked it. We've gotten stronger. My deal is to take the strength, take the talent, and start being a more consistent practice team so that our seniors always work hard for the combine and start working on as freshmen and sophomores. We'll win more games and making them pro day will be a lot easier too. Let's don't wait till the end of the track. Is there any concern that Ross can wouldn't come back. Oh, very much. When, when did he say for your coach, I'm, I'm coming I, I back? I think he's still figuring out. Because that knee is, I mean, we're doing everything we can to get him mentally and psychologically strong enough because he's got to practice at a certain load to to be the player you need to be, also to, to have value to the team. But but he's a veteran, he's a great player, he's a phenomenal leader. We could grind him out in some of these deals and lose him. So as a common sense as a coach, you're getting the risk and reward to get him right. What's the deal with uh, Will Hopkins? 
he's he's got an NCAA deal where you know you know his eligibility was never never officially certified as being cleared. So he's here. He's a great academic standing here. He's done awesome here, but he has to forfeit his spring practice. He cannot he cannot do anything. Or he's he's in our he's doing great in school. He's an academic program, but he cannot lift or have football related activities. And it's just an NCAA. It's like his initial eligibility was questioned, not ever certified, and. Uh, so you think he'd be okay for the fall? Uh, as long as and he's in great standing, plus he's got to be. His penalty is he had he had to give up a semester, and he started in the fall playing with us, so the mm. fall did not become his penalty. So he's losing his spring. Nice, great. And I, I I question the validity of it because he is in great academic standing through a summer session. I mean, he's he's not made a grade lower than he sees since he's been here. So he's in really good academic standing. But by NCAA rule, they, they're saying you got to sit out. And, it's kind of good for that kid to be in structure, but legally he cannot be in our practice. So we're trying to structure his day, maintain the guidelines. He's got to fulfill the penalty. He'll be good. For him. He'll, he'll be legally allowed to work with us in summer, but it's going to no different than Corey Kill. That's going to hurt his development because he's, he's missing opportunity. To with, uh, with Fuchs, how much did you have to be convinced to let him go there and play basketball? Uh, my just comments with, with with coach were academically because of our practice schedule there, the, the academic conflicts could work out. He could maintain his his eligibility as far as, you know, like, you know, they, they practice in the afternoon, we practice in the mornings, but we need to take classes. So we had to work on making sure his schedule work. Uh, he's always been a good student, academic class. I did not want him to regress in weight, mm. and he actually came back a couple pounds heavier because weight was a big to-do. I didn't want him, uh, I, I wouldn't worry about him getting hurt. The running would be great, but he actually did a great job of lifting first and kept his weight up. Uh, you know, I as coach it not be a waste of time, but if it's good for the team, I didn't think it'd be bad for a kid. I thought it would give the kid, quite honestly, more self-esteem and self-confidence. Like, hey, I'm pretty good. If I belong with it, I'm, I'm a talented kid. So I thought it would have psychologically a positive impact for us in the end. I just didn't want him to physically regress, and I don't think he did. Would you let him go back next season? He said he kind of was looking to play next uh, year. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll see how the season goes, because at the end, like, you know, can you really develop football wise and are you going how much you playing? Mm. So I mean I, you know, I mean you could if you just go and need me to probably go for some practices, but do I have to travel as much mm. if I'm not, you know, but you know, coach can get to that point and you know we'll, we'll go through the season and uh, it wasn't our plan when he came here that it was going to play. Mm. You know, he had got to ask about it. I threw it out there. Uh, I didn't I had no negatives with it and I hope it was positive for him. Mm. I think it's been positive for the kid, which to me makes it good for us. Mm. And we'll figure it out next year if we want to.